Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from PremiumBeat.com, and in this video, we're going to show you how to break down the user interface of YouTube. So here we are inside of After Effects, and we're specifically going to recreate the YouTube channel page with the dark theme, which you can see on Google Chrome. So what we need to look at when breaking down any user interface, not just YouTube or anything else, is we need to look at all the elements that are on this page. So let's look at the top here. We see that we have the logo, the search bar, and a few other icons like the upload button. And then we have the channel banner, and then we have the header for the YouTube page, and then we have all the other content that goes into the page of the channel. And why would you want to break down the interface of YouTube? So let's say that you are creating a like a bumper to subscribe to my YouTube channel, or you want to highlight a specific video, or you're doing like a corporate video where the you want to show the page of the you know the business. You can actually with this, you can you know put a lot of emphasis on you know, what you want your audience to look at. So like the subscribe button, we can animate that, or we can animate pretty much anything else that's on this page instead of just taking a traditional screenshot. So I'll be showing you how to create this YouTube channel from scratch. So let's go ahead and start. Let's go and create a new composition by going to new composition, and we can call it a uh, tutorial comp, and it's gonna be 1920 by 1080, and duration is gonna be 15 seconds, click okay. And then let's create another composition, and let's call this one YouTube UI. And this one's going to be a lot larger in height. So go ahead and increase the height to maybe like 4,000 pixels and click OK. And what we're going to do is go back to our tut comp and we're going to bring in the YouTube UI composition into this one here. And basically, this is going to allow us to have one master composition. But go ahead and double click the YouTube UI. And this is where we'll be doing most of our work. So let's go right to the top here. And let's take a look back at the YouTube channel. So let's start with this, you know, the top bar here. So let's go ahead and start with a general background. So go up to layer, new, solid, and we can call it BG, and make comp size, and go ahead and set the color to dark or white, depending on what theme that you want to use. And we'll click OK, make it dark, and OK there. So let's go ahead and bring in the YouTube logo to start this off. And there it is. And we might need to scale this down and we can just put it right at the top. And of course, you can download these project files. The link will be in the description on YouTube, which will lead you to our blog page, and you can download all the assets that we'll be using in this video. So we got the logo, of course, but we want to come back over here, and we want to create the uh, drop-down menu right here. So it's basically three bars. So what we can do is grab the rectangle tool, make sure nothing is selected, come over here, and we can draw out a thin rectangle like this. Click on the word fill, and make sure it's set to solid color, which is right here. Click OK. Click on the word stroke and click on none. Click OK. And we might need to resize this by a little bit, but let's come over here and we can always do a quick little resize. And then let's go to add and let's add a repeater. And we'll go to repeater one, go to the transform repeater one, set the X position to zero. And let's go ahead and increase the Y position just by a touch here. Okay, excellent. So now let's go ahead and create the search bar. And what we can do is grab the rectangle tool again, make sure nothing is selected. And let's draw out a nice thin, long rectangle, kind of like this. And we can come here, change the color of the fill to, maybe we'll set this all the way to black. And then we can click on the word stroke and set this to solid color. And we'll go ahead and set this to white with a three pixel count. And now we have our nice search bar in here. And of course we grab the textile tool and we can type out the word search. And let's go ahead and change this color to white. And let's go ahead and use the typeface uh, Lotto here. And that's totally fine. And you use pretty much whatever you want. I mean, Helvetica should work just fine. There's a lot of typefaces that could work just fine. So go ahead and experiment with that. So we have the word search in here. And of course, we want to take note of the actual color of the text. So this is a nice uh, dark gray. So let's come over here and actually set this to a dark gray. And of course, let's go and maybe change the weight to like a light weight. And, you know, we should be good there. And then we need to create the search icon. And this is actually a little too big. So what we can do is just shorten this down. And let's go ahead and bring in the search icon. And I have this nice search icon here. Let's go up to effect, generate, fill. And let's go ahead and set the color to like a, you know, a medium gray. Click OK. And scale it down into place. You know, and that's cool. And then we'll go back to the shape layer 2 here. And we'll draw another rectangle. Just kind of like this. 
and we'll change the color to a nice you know dark gray click OK and we'll turn off the stroke just by setting the pixel count to zero and all right we're looking pretty good and let's continue to move on to these icons so we need the upload icon this you know nine square button and the notification and of course our logo so let's go ahead and bring in the upload button which will be right here bring it in and let's move this way up there we are and let's go up to effect generate fill and let's set this color to white scale it down and let's move this nicely into place so let's go ahead and grab the rectangle tool and let's draw out a perfect rectangle hold down shift to draw a perfect rectangle set the uh, fill size to white sorry the fill color to white go to add and let's add a repeater and here let's go into the transform repeater one go ahead and decrease the exposition to where these are like nicely tight together and then let's go and add another repeater go to add and add another one and let's go into the transform change the x position to zero and increase the y position to about right there and of course you can hit s ring keyboard for scale and you can always scale this down for the size that you need and then we can come over here and size this up to where it needs to be placed and we just added our bell icon and i am going to run a little bit fast through some of these areas because they do get repetitive uh, so let's go ahead and now bring in our logo so what we can do is of course we can just bring in our logo and you know th that's not good what we need to do is create a circle logo so what we'll do is we'll go up to the ellipse tool and we'll draw out a perfect circle like this hold down shift on your keyboard so we'll bring in our logo which is right here and we'll put it right on top of the circle scale it down so it's nicely in place all right looking good and then of course we'll take both of these layers here we'll pre-compose it by going to layer pre-compose and we can call it uh you know logo circle logo And we'll come over here and put it nicely in place. So let's go ahead and create our channel banner. And let's just grab the rectangle tool. Make sure the color is set to white. And let's just draw a nice white background like this. And we'll go ahead and reposition this. Make this a little bit, a little bit more tidy. And that should be good. And then we'll go ahead and bring in our logo again. So I'll grab our pe uh, premium beat logo. And that's looking pretty good. So let's go here and pre-compose this. And we'll call it banner. Click OK. And we'll change the color. So now let's create the header of our YouTube channel, which is this entire element here. So what we'll do is we'll grab, grab another rectangle tool and we'll just draw a nice header like this. And we'll change this to a medium gray, kind of like so. Click OK. And now we got to start typing our things out. So first things first, well, what do we have done already? We already have the icon up here done. So let's go ahead and let's grab that logo, duplicate it, bring it to the top, and we can move this around, scale it up, and now we have our logo. So basically from here, it's going to be a little bit of just, you know, template work here. We're going to type out some text, type out some pages, add a search icon, add a subscribe button. So it's pretty straightforward from here. So what we want to do is we want to grab the textile tool and type out our text. So we'll come here, type out our text. I'll just paste it in there and go here and try to find a nice position here. And then we'll want to type out our text again for the subscribers and we'll paste that right in there. And of course, make sure to set this to a nice medium gray. So you have that nice offset there. And once again, we're still using the typeface Lotto and you know, should be good. Try to get that pretty much exactly like the YouTube channel there. So, and we can go to the align tab. So go to window align. And when both the layers are selected, you can just align these perfectly. No problem. So we're on, you know, the path of setting this up correctly. And then now we got to type out um, the home page. So let's go grab the title tool and we can type out home. And of course, we'll make this like all caps. So make, you know, hit the TT button over here and that'll be all caps there. And we'll change the uh, color to white. And now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, pasting across. So we want to bring our next page in. We'll duplicate the layer and we can type it out for whatever the next page is. All right, so we're looking good, and maybe we will do like a medium gray. Click OK. And, you know, that should be pretty close to where we should be at. Of course, we can highlight the home page here, but we'll just go ahead and roll along here. We'll want to add the search icon again, so I'll come over here, duplicate our search icon, and we'll bring it to the top. And we'll bring it down, hit here and keyboard for position, 
and we'll bring it down over here and we'll put that in our uh, banner so now we have our search tool and we'll come over here and just grab the eyedropper tool and grab that medium gray there and boom now we have our eyedropper in there of course we can do a little bit more scaling on it so maybe like two percent and now let's go ahead and add the subscribe button so what we can do is grab the rounded rectangle tool this time and just draw out a nice rounded rectangle like so change the color to red and actually we'll grab the uh, youtube logo color so click on the word uh, click on the color fill and grab the youtube red here and that should be good. And of course, we can open the rectangle one, go into the rectangle path one, go to the roundness, and we can load this to about seven or so. And now we can type out our text for subscribe. And that should be pretty much tidied up. So now we have our header in here. Now we want to go ahead and create all the video elements here like so. So what we need to do is start bringing in our thumbnails for our channel. So we'll come here, we have a bunch of thumbnails here, and we can start dragging them in. So our first thumbnail, let's go ahead and bring this in. And, you know, bring this up. Let's scale it down and let's put this like right here. So this one should be a little bit big according to the actual YouTube layout. And let's see where this should go. Should this go? Yes. So this should go right underneath our logo and you know, right there should be good. Maybe make this a little bit smaller. So we have a little bit room for the other thumbnails. So it's actually a little bit confusing. Uh, you know, it's a little bit tough deciding how big these should be when it's just your first image. And you don't have much of a basis to go off of. But once that's in there, we need to, you know, type out our titles here. So we'll grab the textile tool and we'll type that out. All right, looking good. Now we just have to add our other two icons in here. So we'll go ahead and bring those in and we'll need to position those to look nice. So come here, grab in the other image and we'll scale that down and we'll try to get nicely in place there. So things can look good. So nice and small. So probably like, you know, 20% or so. So just moving ahead here, so obviously this would take a little bit of time to place everything here accordingly, but basically you just have your titles, your images, and things are looking good. So we can, now we can move on to the next part of the layout, and we can see that this is a nice thin line here. So what we can do is just grab the pen tool, and we'll draw a very thin line. So we want it to be the size of the, this thumbnail to down to the last thumbnail over here. So what we'll do is we'll try to match this up here, hold down shift on our computer, so it's on our keyboard, so it's a straight line. And make sure to turn off fill, set it to none, and go to stroke, make sure that's set to solid color, and also it's up to like 3px. Okay, so looking good. So now we just have to finish up the last uh, few thumbnails in here. So we'll just do like three of these or so. And for this, you know, we'll just, you know, it's all about placement. So we'll come over here, once again, keep doing what we're doing. And we'll try to find a good placement for everything. And of course, you know, we want to recreate the text. So it's all very simple stuff from here. So I just went ahead and finished this up. And as you can see, it's just very simple stuff. I mean, it's just bringing in your images, trying to get that right placement and getting the titles, you know, correct. So, and getting the titles, you know, very similar to how it's laid out on YouTube. So, you know, for the most part, you know, this is all we're going to do for UI design here. Uh, but before we go ahead and start animating this, what I want to do is go back into our main composition here, Tut Comp. And now the reason why we did this is that now we can have this entire rolling animation here if we want to make it easy. But of course, we'll do individual animation. So for this, to start things off, let's go ahead and add a keyframe for position. And let's move that keyframe forward to maybe like three seconds. So we can animate our beginning elements on and then go to the end of our animation, which would be like seven seconds. And we can have this scroll up all the way to over here. So now we just have like this very nice preview of our YouTube channel here. And now let's go into back into our uh, YouTube UI and let's start animating these elements that come on. So I grouped everything accordingly. So orange is the top header over here. This purple is the banner. Green is the header. Yellow is the uh, first video thumbnails and pink is everything underneath the uh, divider here. So, you know, things are pretty much divided correctly and they're looking good. So we, what we can do is we could animate everything on, you know, as one group if we wanted to, because it's all organized properly, or we can be creative with each of these elements. And for this one, I'll show full detail on, you know, some basic animation of what we can do. But the other ones, I'll probably just, you know, copy and paste it just because it does get repetitive. But maybe for our YouTube logo, we do like a nice position animation. So hit P on your keyboard for position, add a keyframe for it, move it forward in time to maybe like by a second. 
and we'll do like a nice Y position for the uh, YouTube logo, and maybe for our page opener over here, which is this, uh, you know, three rectangles. Uh, we'll also do like another position for this one as well, bring that keyframe forward in time, and we'll bring this up. And then maybe for the search icon, we'll do the entire search bar as one animation. So we'll grab all three of those elements, hit PR and keyboard for position, uh, bring these forward in time. Maybe we'll go past a second, move forward in time on the timeline here. And maybe this one will be like a straight up, you know, from the uh, left side here, or sorry, excuse me, the right side. And of course, let's make all these keyframes easy, ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And now let's go ahead and work on the buttons over here. So let's grab these three icons. So we got the upload icon, the drop down, and the bell. And let's also grab our logo, the premium beat logo. And let's hit S on keyboard for scale. Let's add a keyframe for it. And let's move those keyframes forward in time. And let's set the scale down to 0%. And of course, make these easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And we can rework the animation. And I'll offset these so they don't all come on at the same uh, time here. So just offset the keyframes and we should have a little bit of variation. All right, and for the most part, this should be coming on very uh, nicely and that's totally cool. And then we can work on our banner, which will have it come on here, hit PR and keyboard for position. And we'll do like a nice little X position and those come on over here like so. And we'll make these easy ease keyframes as well. And as you see, it's a pretty much, you can do very simple stuff here. I'll also do another position animation for the background here. Move that keyframe forward in time. Let's move forward it completely. And we'll do like an X position from this side. And we'll hit F9 on our keyboard. Make these both easy, easy keyframes. And now, maybe for the titles, we can do something a little bit different. Maybe we'll use an animation preset for the titles. So let's go into effects and presets. Let's go to animation presets, let's go to text, let's go to animate in. So let's go ahead and apply the fade up and flip preset to each of the uh, titles over here. And let's grab all the key, let's grab the, all the last keyframes here, bring them in so it's not a long animation. And let's make all these easy ease keyframes. And from here we can do a little bit of a nice offset as well, bring them back by a frame or so. Okay. And we can, of course, continue to animate all these other elements. But from this point on, you should have a good understanding of what everything should look like just in your nice position and scale animations. Or you can do anything that you want. But for the most part, you are set up for success. And you should have a complete, you know, full animation on whatever you're looking to do. And, of course, make sure everything is going to be timed up with your position animation uh, in your main composition. So everything kind of comes on, looks nice. So there was a lot of repetition in this tutorial. That's why we kind of rolled through everything because a lot of positioning and scaling animation and it's all repetitive. So, and if you were following along with this tutorial, you should have something very similar to uh, this result right here. A lot of, you know, position animation and it looks really cool. So we now have full control over the YouTube UI of our channel page. So hopefully you guys found this tutorial insightful. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.